Welcome to this Michigan Region 8 MCA training on using the Michigan Image Trend Elite or MyEmsys data system for analytical reporting. The topic for today's session is how we can use the NEMSYS data dictionary and the Michigan State data set to help you build reports that'll really work. Today's session is uh, some nuts and bolts stuff. Uh, in another session, we went over the basics of using the Image Trend Elite Report Writer to do analytical reports. And you can get in and play around with the system and explore it. And along the way, you're going to probably run into a few gotchas um, as you try to really work with the data elements that you want to explore and really get some reports that actually give you the information you're looking for. As you're working through building reports, there are lots of kind of detail things that can make your report life successful, I guess. Uh, and so that's what we're going to go through today. Um, we're going to start out by setting up a very simple report where we just count patient care reports uh, for our agencies. And then what we're going to do is consult the NEMSYS data dictionary to understand how to use all the different data elements that are available for reports. So um, we will go through data types, the concept of not values and pertinent negatives, the concept of recurrence. We'll look at how to tell if elements are mandatory, required, or optional, which gives you a sense of how complete they're going to be filled in by all the agencies. And finally, uh, a few more things that are in the state data set, some lists that will help you uh, in building certain kinds of reports. So we're going to start by uh, just setting up a simple report, and we're going to do that in the Image Trend Elite system, MyEmsys. I'm going to go ahead and log in with my own account. And I'll agree to the data privacy statement. I'll go up to the Tools menu and choose Report Writer. And this is where I'm going to start my report. Uh, I'm going to create a, a transactional report on EMS incidents. That's the most common thing that you would uh, run reports on. Um, I'm going to control click this, and it's going to open up a new tab in my web browser. If I just directly click it, it'll open up the report right here on this page. Um, but it's sometimes handy, especially if you're working on, on several reports at once, to open them in separate tabs uh, so that you can work on each one independently. So here it's opened a blank report for me. And um, I'm going to start out by just making a report that counts patient care reports. It just counts records. So I do that by clicking Create Column. And I choose Count as the type of column that I'm going to create. And I'm just going to call it Count. Uh, that's all I need to do to create this uh, summary report that gives me a count. I'm going to set up one thing on the display tab, and that is that I'm going to show some uh, summaries um, down at the bottom of the report for my counts. OK, and lastly, I'm going to set up uh, criteria. In the Report Writer Basics training, I mentioned that um, while the report writer does enforce security constraints and only gives you access to the records that you should have access to based on uh, your MCA setup, uh, if you specifically set up some criteria with that same uh, kind of limitation, uh, it, the reports will actually run more quickly uh, because it, it, it applies this criteria first and then it applies your security constraints. So if you have no criteria at all, the system is going to search through the millions of records that are available statewide, and it's going to check each record to see if you have access to it or not based on your MCA permissions. But if we limit that down with uh, criteria uh, from the start, then this report will run more quickly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose agency region, and I'm going to say that it's equal to region 8. So uh, this is data you know, I'll, I already have access to. It's not really going to change what I have access to, but it is going to run the report more quickly because I've limited it down to the, the number of records that it has to check to see if I have permission to access them. OK, and then I'm just going to do that. I'm going to run my report. 
So this is going to count all the patient care reports that I have access to uh, you know, in Region 8. OK, and it says that I have uh, access to 790 reports. That's my total. All right, so this is the basic report that we're going to use uh, to explore some things in the Nemesis Data Dictionary and with various data elements. Uh, first, I want to show you where the Nemesis Data Dictionary is. So I'm going to go to the Nemesis website at nemesis.org. From the Nemesis homepage, I can go to the Technical Resources menu and choose uh, Data Dictionaries and XSD. On the Data Dictionaries page, I would recommend using the web version of the Data Dictionary. But you can also download a PDF version onto your computer. OK, so here comes the web version of the Nemesis Data Dictionary. The Data Dictionary uh, covers two data sets. One is called DEM data set, and that's information about EMS agencies and their resources. The other is EMS data set, and that's the data set that is actual patient care reports, all the calls that the EMS agencies have gone on, uh, one record for each patient care report. Uh, we're really going to focus on the EMS data set portion of the data dictionary. And you may have noticed when we were in Report Writer, we were choosing the EMS incidents data set. Uh, oops, this one here. Uh, the agency data set is up here. That would be the stuff that's DEM data set. So if you need some information about your agencies, that's where to go. But if you need information about the, the calls they're going on, it's EMS incidents in Report Writer which corresponds to um, uh, EMS data set in the data dictionary. OK, let's take a look uh, in the data dictionary. This uh, has a list of all the sections in the data dictionary. They're kind of uh, labeled so that you have a sense of uh, what they are. Uh, for example, e-response is going to be the section that contains information about the EMS response to the incident. So. Uh, I can click down here on EMS on e-response in the EMS data set sections, and it will bring up a list of the data elements that are in that section of the data set. Let's look at e-response.14, which is the EMS unit call sign. So this is the call sign uh, of the vehicle that responded to the call. We have a definition for it, and then several other pieces of information here. What I want to focus on right on this one is the data type. This is a string. So this means that uh, this element is just going to be text. So let's take a look at that uh, in our report writer. We're going to go to the columns tab and we're going to look for eResponse.14, the EMS unit call sign. You'll notice there's uh, three options here. Two of them are CAD options. That's going to be data that was received from a CAD system, which may or may not be populated. So go with the one that's not CAD, uh, just this plain response EMS unit call sign. I'm going to go ahead and put that onto my report and, uh, and run it. So these are the different call signs in my uh, MCA that have gone on calls, and I see how many calls each of those uh, units has gone on. And you can see these are text. So there's a wide variety of, of different kinds of call signs that are used throughout these EMS agencies. I still have my total of 790 patient care reports. Since this is text, it means that if I were to set up criteria for this element, then I would have certain operators available to me in setting up the criteria that are all related to text or strings. You know, I can say it contains or does not contain or is equal to or something like that, but I can't say is greater than or less than or is before or after because those would be related to numbers or dates. Um, so th this, is, uh, this affects the kind of criteria I can set up. That's why it's good to know what data type I'm using. OK, let's look at a couple other data types. I'm going to go back to the data dictionary. 
back to the eResponse section, and I want to look at eResponse.22. You'll see 19 through 22 are all odometer readings. So if I look at eResponse.22, I see that it is a decimal. So this is going to be a number that will have up to two digits after the decimal point. Um, and uh, so this is the number of uh, miles um, or the, the reading on the odometer of the vehicle uh, at the end of the call. And since this is a number, then that would affect um, uh, how it would look in a report. So if I were wanting to set up criteria about that one, Uh, then I'm going to have a different choice of operators here because I can do things like greater than or less than uh, and things like that. So that's a number. Let me show you a third data type that's important. I want to look at uh, eResponse.15, level of care of this unit. This is a coded list, so it's not just free text. These are the only possible values that you'll ever see for this data element. So let's take a look at eResponse.15, level of care of this unit. I'm gonna to go to the columns tab of my report. I'm gonna take off the unit call sign and I'm gonna put on level of care. And we'll give that a second to run. Okay. And so uh, we can see here that Michigan has actually uh, relabeled some of these, but we have this very um, distinct list. We don't have lots of different uh, values in here because this list is constrained by the data dictionary to be only these certain values. We still have 790 PCRs here. The last uh, major data type I wanna show you is dates and times. Uh, let me go back to the data dictionary, and I'm going to go to the times section. Uh, and let's take a look at etimes.03, unit notified by dispatch date time. So this is a date time data type. It means that it includes a year, month, day, hour, minutes, seconds, and even milliseconds, and a time zone. Uh, all of that is uh, um, included in a date time value. If we were uh, over here in Report Writer, if I were setting up uh, something related to that data element, now I see uh, the operators have changed because they're gonna say, they're gonna give me choices like before, after, between, and within that I can use for these date time values. So um, I can say things like is equal to and I can pick a specific date, or I can say something like last month. So everything that happened last month, um, or uh, everything that is uh, on or before um, yesterday, and things like that. There are other data types in the data dictionary, but text, numbers, lists, and date time values are the majority, uh, the most common data types that you'll run into as you're running reports. Okay, next I want to take a look at not values and pertinent negatives. So back to the data dictionary. And let's take a look at uh, etimes.06, unit arrived on scene date time. All right, so this one, as we've seen, the uh, data type is that it's a date time value. Uh, but additionally, this element has some attributes called not values, which allows this element to be blank with a couple of specific responses for why it's blank. Um, so it could say, it could have a real date time in it, or it could have a value called not applicable or a value called not recorded. Let's take a look at how this looks uh, in the report writer. I'm gonna go to columns, uh, take off level of care, put on e times.06, and you'll see there are two choices here that are relevant to us. One is the unit arrived on scene date time, and then the next one says unit arrived on scene date time with not values. So this first choice 
uh, it's going to give you, if they filled out a time for arriving on scene, then it's going to give it to you. If they put in a not value, like not recorded or not applicable, it's just going to show a blank instead. Whereas the second one uh, is going to show you either the, the date and time or the not value that they recorded. Now, the reason we could have e times.06 being blank is because perhaps the unit never arrived on scene. Uh, they may have been canceled prior to arrival. So I'm going to throw both of these onto my report so we can see the difference between the two. Here we see just the date time, where we have month, day, year, hour, minute, second. Over here, we see it's formatted a little different, but it's still a month, day, year, hour, minute, um, and AM, PM. Uh, but we see here, for example, this first one, where the date time is blank, but the date time with not values is not recorded. So someone specifically said not recorded on that one. And we may have some, we'll look down at the bottom here. Yeah, here we have 21 where they were blank with a not value of not applicable. So these are probably calls where they got canceled before they arrived at scene. So they specifically said that their arrive at scene time was not applicable. So there are various places, many elements throughout the data set that will have these not recorded and not applicable choices. And in the Image Trend Elite Report Writer, you'll typically have a choice as to whether you want those included or not, but sometimes you won't. Um, sometimes they'll just be included no matter what. So you'll need to account for those. Uh, for example, if you were doing a data quality report and you wanted to know uh, how often the arrive on scene date time was, was blank, then you may want to decide whether you're going to include these not values or not as being blanks uh, in your data quality report. Okay, there's another attribute that comes up on a few reports, not a lot of them. It's called pertinent negatives. And for pertinent negatives, I'm going to go look at the history section, and I'm going to look at pregnancy. So this is a coded list. It has these options of no, possible, and several yeses. But it also has attributes for pertinent negatives. So in addition to those choices, someone may choose the choice of refused or unable to complete when recording a value for pregnancy. Let's take a look at that one. I'll take these two off. And we'll look up pregnancy, and you'll see again that it has two choices here. One is pregnancy without the pertinent negative. Uh, and then there's a second, a second choice here, a second column, that'll give you the pertinent negative. So they've separated those out from the core choices of the element, but they may be important to you in certain reports. So let's generate the report. All right, so we have two records where pregnancy was possible unconfirmed. We have 126 where it was no, and we have 654 where they just didn't answer it at all. But we do have eight where it was not one of the core choices, but they chose a pertinent negative instead of unable to complete. So if you were writing a report that included information about pregnancy, then you may or may not want to look at the pertinent negatives depending on the purpose of your report. You may or may not find everything you need in that core list of choices for pregnancy. So again, that comes from the data dictionary where you're able to see uh, whether a particular element has not values, whether or not it has pertinent negatives. And of course, when you're in the report writer, you'll often see those choices come up as well. Okay, so those are uh, some of the basics of data types, not values, pertinent negatives. Uh, so the next piece I'm going to cover is uh, actually one of the trickiest and stickiest uh, things that can happen in your analytical reports. Can it? Because if you're not aware of it, it's going to throw off your counts, and you could get inflated numbers without realizing it. And that's the concept of recurrence. Let's go back to the data dictionary. And let's go to the e-response section. 
There are several data elements here that talk about types of delays on a call. And you'll notice uh, next to each of those, it has a one colon M, which stands for one or many, which means that there might be one answer to type of scene delay, or there might be more than one answer to type of scene delay on a single patient care report. Whereas other elements, you'll see one to one, that means you'll have exactly one answer for that element on a patient care report, or zero to one, meaning you could it could be blank, or you could have an answer for it. But these ones, you could have multiple answers. Let's look at a type of response delay. Okay, so in this page, here's recurrence right here, and it says one or many. So you're gonna have at least one of these, but you may have many of these. In other words, during the response, EMS may have had delays for multiple reasons for directions, distance, weather, traffic, et cetera, all on the same patient care report. Let's see what this looks like when you build a report in Report Writer. I'm gonna take off those previous two elements and I'm gonna look for, oops, eResponse09, um, type of scene delay. There's a bit of a clue here for you. It has the word list in it. We're gonna see how that affects things. So we'll generate the report. Okay, so here are the different um, things that were recorded on reports. You'll see the vast majority had one answer, which was none slash no delay. And many just had one other answer. But you'll see there's some here, for example, these two reports that had both distance and weather, uh, whereas there were 10 reports that had only weather and two reports that had only distance. Um, another report up here that had distance and other. Uh, another report here that had none and distance. So that's obviously a data quality problem there. Uh, and so this can get a little tricky if you're setting up criteria in your report. Let's say, for example, that you wanted to get all records where they had a delay of distance. So let's set up a criteria here. And I'm gonna say is equal to distance. Okay, so on the, on the face of it, we would think, great, this is gonna give us all reports where they recorded a delay of distance. Now let's see what actually happens here. Okay, so what we got was no results at all. And that's because it's just that's that string of values that were in there. We can improve this slightly because in the initial run of the report, we saw that these actually had quotes around them. So if we put quotes around the word distance, we can generate the report again. Okay, and this did give us something. It found distance with quotes around it, those two patient care reports, but what's missing? We're, we're missing all of the reports where distance was one of the choices along with other choices. So we're only getting the reports where distance was the only delay, which is usually not what we want. We usually want all reports, you know, regardless of what the other delays are, we want everything that had distance as a delay. So let's go back to our criteria one more time. And what we can do with these list type elements is instead of saying equal to, we can say contains, okay? Contains distance, and then it doesn't matter if we have the quotes or not. It's gonna look in that comma separated list of, of delays for the word distance. So let's generate the report now. Okay, there we go. So now we finally got what we probably wanted, which was all of the reports that had distance as a, as a delay, and they may have had other delays as well, uh, but everything that had distance is in our report now, and that definitely gives us a different count.
So those list elements, uh, be aware of them. You're gonna see that they'll have the word list in them in Report Writer. And when you're looking in the data dictionary, you're gonna see that they have a recurrence with that M there standing for many. Well, that's not the only kind of recurrence that you're gonna see in the data dictionary and in these reports. There's another kind of recurrence that you're gonna see. And I'm gonna look at the vitals section for an example of that. I'm gonna look at systolic blood pressure. Systolic blood pressure has a one-to-one -one recurrence. Okay, that's great. But if you work your way up the tree, you'll see that it's inside of a group that has an M on it. Let me make that a little bigger. Uh, so what happens here is there can be multiple sets of vital signs. And within each set of vital signs, there's gonna be exactly one systolic blood pressure recorded. But they may have taken vital signs five or 10 times on the call. And each time that they took vital signs, they may have recorded a systolic blood pressure. So this is a, a different kind of situation where you can have this element show up more than once on a PCR, even though it says one-to-one -one right next to the element itself. So let's take a look at that and how it affects things. Uh, first of all, because um, it's going to be looking at, across a bunch of vital sign sets, uh, my report is gonna take longer to run. And in order to kind of mitigate that for training, uh, I'm gonna add a date range criteria on my report to make things run a little quicker. So I'm gonna look at unit notified by dispatch date time. I'm just gonna say that it's equal to uh, this month. And now let's go over to the columns. Take off that previous one. I wanna run this report just as it is to show you how many patient care reports I'm looking at. Okay, uh, 61. So we'll keep that number in mind, 61 is the count. Now let's go back to our columns, add uh, evitals.06, systolic blood pressure, and run the report again. This one's gonna take a little longer to run this time. And uh, when we get the results, we'll see why. So uh, over here on the far right, I have different systolic blood pressure readings, and it's telling me how many patient care reports had that reading. Or actually, it's telling me how many times that reading was recorded. You'll see that my total now is 118. It's no longer 61. So my total has changed by quite a bit. It's, it's almost doubled. And that's because systolic blood pressure could show up more than once on a PCR. So these counts here are not representing distinct PCRs. The same PCR may be included in different counts. Um, there may have been a PCR that had a systolic blood pressure of 150, and then the same PCR also had a, a blood pressure of 145 that was recorded a few minutes later. So that PCR got counted twice. So the actual count that we're getting here in this total is um, the number of distinct values of systolic blood pressures, not the number of patient care reports. Uh, there are some things that the report writer makes available to you to help mitigate this issue. There are times where maybe that's what you want. You want the actual raw data. But there may be other times where you still want uh, everything just summarized at the patient care report level. To demonstrate that, I'm gonna take off systolic blood pressure and I'm gonna do my search here again. You'll see that there's a whole bunch of columns here that all come from evitals.06 systolic blood pressure. We were working with the one in vitals, uh, which is gonna give us that granular, you know, every blood pressure that was recorded on every patient care report. But there are some others that are summary level that'll give you just one per report. And those are these ones that start with the word patient. So I can look for the highest blood pressure that was recorded on each patient care report or the lowest or the first or the last. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick both of these, the low and the high. And I'm also gonna choose the blood pressure count. Let's run that report again.
All right, let's uh, scroll down to the bottom. See, now my total is back to 61. So there are 61 patient care reports in my report here. And what has happened is it's pulled uh, one row for each patient care report. And then you can see the different values that were recorded. So um, uh, let's take, for example, this one right here. The highest uh, blood pressure on this was 124. The lowest was 114. There were three different blood pressures recorded. So in addition to the 124 and 114, there was another blood pressure somewhere in there that was in between those two values. So as you're building reports, if you're interested in blood pressure, let's say, for example, you want to look at all reports where the blood pressure was below 90, then you can decide which of these columns you want to use. Uh, if you wanted calls where any of the blood pressures taken were below 90, so if, if the patient dipped below 90 at any time, you could use the patient low systolic blood pressure uh, to be below 90, and that would get you what you want. Uh, or if you were looking for calls uh, where all of the blood pressures recorded were below 90, then you could take the patient high systolic blood pressure below 90, and that would mean that the you know if the highest one was below 90, then all the others were below 90 as well. Um, so you can choose which of these columns you want to use for the purpose of your particular report. So that's recurrence. Um, again, the two gotchas that you're going to run into, one is those list elements where you need to be careful when you're setting up criteria and filtering to make sure you're actually including the stuff you want. And second is these elements that occur once within a group and the group can repeat, like vitals, medications, procedures, etc. And with those, you need to be careful if you're including counts on your your report that you know what you're counting. Are you counting patient care reports or are you counting instances of the element that you're looking at? Uh, you can quickly explode your counts by including that element on your report. The next topic I wanna to look at is um, related to data completeness. Uh, as you're working on a report, let's go to the columns here. Um, you'll see that there's a huge list of data elements that you can include on a on an analytical report. And you may be wondering, you know, which ones of these really have data in them? Uh, some of them look pretty obscure. And it, it may be hard to tell just by looking through the list, which ones are the ones I can really count on that are going to be filled out most of the time. And you may have to do some exploration on that, but I can give you a starting point to figure out which elements are really filled out consistently by agencies. So the first starting point is in the data dictionary. In the data dictionary, let me go to, um, let's go just to the main e-response section. Uh, you'll see a couple tags here that will help you. One is the red N tag. That means it's a national element. That means that we're asking everyone across the country to collect to that element. So elements that are national elements are more likely to be filled out um, everywhere across the country. Next, look at the usage piece, which is in gray and has an M for mandatory, R for required, E for recommended, or O for optional. The elements that are mandatory, all of the mandatory elements are also national elements. Those elements are filled out um, on 100% of PCRs. It is impossible to skip that element uh, without having an error. So the mandatory elements are the ones you know you can count on for sure to be there. This is important, for example, in times where uh, most of these times are not mandatory, but two of them are. The unit notified by dispatch date time is mandatory, and back in service date time is mandatory. So if you're doing any kind of filtering on times, those are the two elements that are going to show up on every single patient care report. You're guaranteed that they're going to be there. Uh, if they're not there, then it's an incomplete report that hasn't been uh, uh, validated and finished yet. So you can really count on those. Next, you'll see some that are required. They have an R. All of them are also national elements. And uh, so those are the next most likely elements to be filled out on patient care reports. Now, they are going to be blank sometimes uh, because there are times where they don't apply. 
Uh, there are times when the unit never went on route or never arrived at the scene, or there was no patient, so they never arrived at a patient. And that's why those elements are not mandatory. But denoting that they're required means they're gonna be filled out a lot, uh, most of the time. Next, the recommended ones with an E or the optional ones with an O, those are less likely to be filled out unless the state requires them. So that's what we can find in the data dictionary. Now let's go to the Michigan State data set to see some stuff that's really specific to Michigan. Uh, I'm going to go to the NEMSIS homepage, and I'm going to scroll down to a map of the US. And I'm going to click on Michigan to get resources about Michigan. And we're going to look at the state data set. The Michigan State data set contains a list of the data elements that Michigan has asked all agencies in the state to collect. And it's the state required elements list. I'm gonna turn off the, the demographic elements so that we're looking at just the EMS data set elements. I'm gonna show the non-required elements as well. And just scroll down a bit here. You'll see that all of the elements that are national elements are also state elements in Michigan. Uh, but then there are a bunch of elements that are not state elements. Okay, so these ones, they're not required at the national or state level, which means reporting on these is, is gonna be more spotty. There will be some agencies that have turned those elements on and they collect them all the time, and other agencies that don't collect those elements at all because no one requires them to collect them. So when you're working on an analytical report, take that approach of, okay, I can really count on the mandatory elements. They're gonna be filled out every time. The required elements, they're gonna be filled out most of the time if they apply to the call. The other elements, it's gonna depend on whether Michigan is requiring them or not. If Michigan requires them, there's a good chance they'll be filled out. If Michigan does not require them, uh, they may or may not be filled out. You can't really count on it. You'll have to explore. There's one other type of element I wanna point out. I'm gonna type in IT here. And uh, see if I can find um, like here's here's one here where the number of the element starts with, with the letters IT. You're not going to find this in the Nemesis data dictionary because this is a custom element that has been created by Image Trend, and that's what IT stands for. So an Image Trend custom element. These are unlikely to be filled out on, in most agencies. It is possible that a particular agency has turned on some of these IT elements for collection and is in fact collecting them, but uh, not likely that you'll see it across the board in your agencies. There is one sort of exception. I'm gonna come back to the Michigan EMS data set. Michigan has defined some custom elements at the state level. And there are a couple here that start with IT. So since Michigan has defined these statewide, they've asked all vendors in the state to implement these elements. These ones actually are likely to be filled out by your agencies because Michigan is requiring it. So for example, responsible MCA, that's an element that most agencies in Michigan are filling out on their calls. So as you build reports, uh, work your way through mandatory, required, optional, refer to the Michigan State data set to see if they're on the required elements list. If they're a custom element, take a look and see if they're on the Michigan custom element list. That'll give you a sense of how completely these elements are reported. Then I would recommend just building a report to explore the element that you're looking at to really verify how often it's recorded before you move on to uh, really looking at the operational or clinical side of things in your report. Okay, last topic I wanna to cover is a few additional things that are in the Michigan State data set that could be helpful. I'm gonna come back to the NEMSIS data dictionary and I'm gonna look at procedures. If I go to eprocedures.03, that's the procedure that was done. Uh, I'm gonna see here, this looks a little weird. The constraint is, and the data type is that it's an integer. Well, we're expecting procedures like uh, you know intubation or starting an IV, et cetera. And this is just saying it's an integer. And that's because they use these uh, codes that are developed by a standard called SNOMED CT. 
And uh, you can go to the SNOMED website and see that they have like hundreds of thousands of different codes for procedures. There's a whole bunch of them. Well, what procedures do we actually have in Michigan? That's answered by the Michigan State data set. So in the Michigan State data set, I can go to procedures permitted by the state. I'm going to see a list of just over 100 procedures that Michigan uses uh, and that the agencies in Michigan use statewide. So um, let's say, for example, um, uh, that I wanted to look at uh, IV starts. Um, in the SNOMED term terminology, that is actually uh, catheterization. And you'll see that there are a handful of SNOMED codes for catheterization of various uh, veins um, and other places. Here's a code that's catheterization of veins. So that's going to be the most common catheterization or, or IV start. Uh, but there are other types of IV starts in uh, you know, other veins or uh, specific veins or other areas or um, arterial catheter care, et cetera. So if I was looking at IVs, then by referring to the Michigan procedure list, I can see which procedures I'm probably looking for. Let's go to the report writer. I'm going to take off these elements that I was working with. And I'm going to look at uh, eProcedures.03. And let's bring both the code and the description uh, onto my report. And we're still looking at calls that happened this month. Let's go ahead and run that report. This one's also going to take a while to run because uh, since we're tying to procedures, uh, there could be many procedures on one PCR. So it's uh, going to that additional table to get the procedures. Okay, so we see here a list of different procedures that have been performed, how many times they've been performed. Uh, we get their code and their um, label. And uh, we'll see, for example, if we are looking at the state data set, catheterization of vein, there's the code for it. If we look in our report results, um, it's this one right here, it has that same code. But you'll see that in the Michigan Image Trend Elite system, the state has actually relabeled it to look a little more friendly. So vascular access vein extremity. Why is this important? Well, if you're setting up criteria on your report, um, you need to either know what the state has labeled it as so that you can set up your criteria correctly, or you need to know what the code is for that procedure. And that may be a more reliable way to set up your criteria. So if I set up criteria and I said where the procedure performed code is 39223005, then I know that regardless of how it's been labeled, I'm going to get all the reports that had um, an IV start in an extremity vein. Um, so that's something to be aware of with procedures. And the same thing applies to medications. There is a medication list, about 120 medications. You can see the descriptions, but also the codes for each of those medications uh, that are used in Michigan. There's also an EMS agency list. So if you're looking at the agencies in your MCA or wanting to look at a specific agency, here's where you can get their names and numbers if you want to be able to filter things down. And lastly, the facility list that Michigan has set up with facility location codes and names. There's a really good compliance with location codes, but occasionally an EMS agency will get a little bit off on the names. I want to demonstrate that. I'm going to take uh, the disposition uh, destination name. And I'm also going to take the destination code. I'm actually going to put code first. And we're going to sort everything by the code. And I'm going to remove my date range criteria so we can include a few more records here. 
Okay, so we're no longer looking at just this month. We're going to look at all the data that I have access to. All right, so what I'd like to point out, you'll see um, how many calls we had to each of these destinations. But you'll notice that this one right here is listed twice. The same code is listed twice uh, with two different names. One is Dickinson County Memorial Hospital, the other is Dickinson County Healthcare. So there are some agencies that are using a different name for this destination. If you were doing a report where you're wanting to really uh, filter things down to a particular destination, if you filtered on destination name, you may inadvertently miss some reports or exclude some reports that just had a different spelling of the name. However, if you were to filter on disposition code, that'll be more reliable. You know that you'll get the reports, all of the reports that went to Dickinson County Healthcare, uh, regardless of various, um, you know, variations in the spelling of the name of that hospital uh, across the various agencies. So that's where the state data set from Michigan can be really helpful with those things that are Michigan specific. All right, so for general information on data elements, you can start with the NEMSIS data dictionary from the NEMSIS website at nemsis.org. For things that are more specific to Michigan, like specific lists of procedures, meds, agencies, um, and uh, facilities, uh, or which elements Michigan requires, uh, go to the NEMSIS homepage, scroll down to the map of the US, and click on Michigan, uh, and then take a look at the state data set for all of that information. I hope that this is helpful as you're building reports. These are kind of the nitty gritty details that can um, turn into snags or obstacles as you build reports uh, that if, if you're aware of them, you're more likely to come out with a report that actually gives you the numbers or the information that you really wanted to get. And you're accounting for things like different data types or whether things are blank, not recorded. You're accounting for whether something happened more than once on a patient care report, and you know what it is you're really counting when that happens. And you're, you're aware of which data elements are really more likely to be filled out on calls. So you're, you're relying more heavily on the ones where the data quality and completeness is higher. This completes the Michigan Region 8 MCA training on using the NEMSIS Data Dictionary and the Michigan State Data Set to help you build reports that work. Thank you.